couple things you want to avoid. Um, having your head explode is definitely one of them. Um, it's easy to get overloaded with this in spite of everything. You can get some, get some help, and I don't mean psychiatric help. I mean, you, know, you can hire someone to help you with this, or if you have an employer already, you can have them do some of this. Be careful about how they do it. Make sure that you own the content that they're posting. Make sure you want to own the content that they're posting. Give them some guidelines. Um, a pretty good specific social media policy for your company um, or for that person is very important. There's a lot of really obvious stuff like, you know, don't curse at people, things like that. But even just writing a single sentence on a piece of paper that says, you know, I agree I will use common sense and not do stupid things on, in social media while I'm handling, you know, while I'm representing my company and having a signature line beneath it would probably help. <clears throat> you can also hire someone like me. Um, we tend to be kind of expensive. I'm just warning you. But you can go and hire a firm, an agency, to go do this for you. Um, even if you do, generally we're still going to want you to help us write the content. Most agencies are not comfortable posting as you for good reason, right? Because we're not you. We don't know as much about your industry as you do. So we might send you something saying, hey, this person asked this question. Can you draft a quick answer? You send the answer. We edit it, and then we post it for you. Or we'll write the possible answer, and then, you know, whatever. Get used to using mobile a little bit. You know, instead of only doing this when you're at your desk, if you're walking around somewhere and you see a picture of something interesting that you want to post for some reason, just take a quick shot of it and post it to Instagram. That's an extra 15 seconds, uh, especially if you're going to take a picture of it anyway. Um, and then that's another interesting thing. You can certainly check for posts and things. If you ever look at people in the airport, what are they all doing now? They're all looking at their phones. Most of them are probably just texting, but you know, some of us are actually just checking our, our streams real quick since that's a good time to do it. Can you use a photo? Um, can you use also um, Twitter? Do you have to go through Instagram? Or can you do it directly? Well, the, what I find the easiest thing to do is because, is because Instagram will let me push the photo to Twitter and Facebook, I'll take the picture, post it, and then just have Instagram also send it to Facebook and Twitter. So Insta you, use, you wouldn't use um, Hootsuite for that? Um, I don't generally use Hootsuite to post photos. In fact, I don't use the Hootsuite client on my mobile phone at all. Um, it's just not, I just don't want to have it on there. You certainly can, it's a good client. I just, personally, I don't use it. So mobile is just a way to, to kind of accomplish some of this. Don't do this when you're driving, okay? <laughs> I'm a cyclist, all right? I'm a cyclist and, you know, I, I grew up as a competitive cyclist in New Jersey and Southern California, and I have had more near-death experiences in the last five years in Seattle, now that people are driving around like this, than I did in both those places combined. And I was a bike messenger when I moved here 18 years ago, and it still wasn't as dangerous. So please, don't do any of this while you're driving. Will Instagram also post it to um, LinkedIn, or do you have to do something else? No, you have to do something else. But LinkedIn doesn't really have the same kind of tools around photo posting. Um, it's not quite as, it's just not quite as, it's not the same thing. Stick to 10, 5, 10. All right, don't let the 10 turn into a 15 and the 5 turn into a 10. Um, really stick to 10, 5, 10. Um, I've experimented with a lot of different time periods. For me, at least, this is a really good setup. So try it for a while. Give it a chance for at least a few weeks <laughs> um, before you start trying to rejigger the, the time periods. And of course, remember, it's talking and you must matter. Really, really important. Keep asking yourself that question. If you start feeling like you're losing your sense of direction a little bit, you know, have, that, have the you must matter note or does it matter hanging by your monitor. Um, it's a re it, it clears things up really quickly. So there's a whole bunch of tricks, I guess I'd call them tricks, to getting a response, to, to making sure that people respond to you when you post. And, and most <clears throat> of what I've talked about with earned media requires some form of response. Right? Not doesn't necessarily mean they reply to you, but it means that somehow they stop and they read what you wrote. If you don't get that, then you're not earning any media. You feel like you're doing something, but you're not really accomplishing anything. So obviously the first thing is go out and answer questions. And I've hammered on this one enough. I'm not going to do it again. Um, have good calls to action. If you post something and you want people to like it, ask them to like it. You would be amazed how big a difference that makes. And I'm not being sarcastic. Um, 
I sent out a tweet today just for fun on Twitter saying, hey folks, go like, our fa go like Portent's Facebook page. And we got, I don't know, 10 or 15 likes in a half an hour. It's not too bad considering it took me, you know, five seconds to write it. There's certain specific words that will get people to respond. And if you want to read a fantastic book, it's a book got by a guy named Cialdini. It's called The Psychology of Persuasion. Um, it will horrify you about the way marketers manipulate all of us, but there, it is brilliant about just the different ways you can use words and, and communication to persuade people. And one of the big things he found was if you add because to almost any request or statement, and it can have the most ridiculous reason after that, it works. So for example, he had a bunch of students go out, this is what grad students get to do, right? Go out to a bunch of laundromats with laundry and go to someone who's about to put their laundry into a washing machine and say, um, do you mind if I go ahead of you because I need to wash my clothes? And nine times out of 10, they would step aside and let them do it because of the word because. That was it. And by the way, the tweet I sent out this morning was, please go like our Facebook page because it'll make me smile. That was it. And people who know how much of a smart ass I am wouldn't even have believed that. Um, so anyway. Uh, you is a really good one. Talk to people, not at them. So addressing people personally, because remember this is just talking. You are not communicating with a huge group of people here. You're communicating with many, many people one at a time. So you, um, your, personalize it. Tell people what to do. Another guy in social media tested different languages to see what would get the most people to follow him on Twitter. And he tried things like, please follow me on Twitter. Um, please follow me. Please click here. But then when he just said, you should follow me on Twitter, that got the best result by, by enough that it's statistically confident that it worked. So again, you know, the because and the you should. Should is a very powerful word in the English language. Not always positive, but it's a very powerful one. <clears throat> so tell people what you want them to do. Um, they don't mind. They're going to just ignore you if they don't want to do it. Um, but just getting to the point is kind of refreshing, I think. Ask them to retweet. If you send out a tweet that you want people to retweet, just say, please retweet. Can't say that word again, so I'm just going to move on. And then try to create situations where participation equals agreement. So if it's something that people really care about, um, see if you can get them into a place where they feel like if they don't participate, they're not agreeing, they're not endorsing. So here's an example. Uh, one of our clients did, you know, posted this on Facebook, click like if you support local and organic farmers. It got an incredible response. It reached 13,000 people, which is something like twice what they had ever gotten before. Uh, and the reason for that is it had a call to action in it that was specific to actually liking it. So the call to action dovetailed perfectly with the action that was required to expand reach. So anytime you can do something in social media that connects participation to endorsing your idea directly to something that will expand your reach, you're going to win. If it's, you know, if you've got one person now, you're going to get three. If you've got three person now, three people now, you're going to get nine and so on. Use images on Facebook. This is just on Facebook really. But Time and time again, uh, we see that an image attached to a Facebook post almost always improves response to the Facebook post. There are a few exceptions. Um, you know, if you're in the porta potty business, maybe not. But generally, an image with a Facebook post is going to work really well. And then I talked about analytics. Look at the words. All right, look at what you said over the last week, over the last month. What was it about what you said that had an impact? What made it matter? Always be asking yourself that question. Always. Um, and there are ways to, you know, there are tools for this, but really in the end, a quick look at your, your Facebook insights or your Hootsuite list is going to be the best way to do it. Questions? The exploding head thing is a concern to me. Uh, <laughs> I was just, I just pulled up my Twitter feed and I have only I follow only 38 people. <clears throat> I check in. If I follow just 
if I just read your posts, Richard Dawkins' posts, and Kelly Oxford's, I'd be spending more than 20 minutes a day. Um, and you're not necessarily going to go look at Twitter in all of those five-minute periods either. Uh, you know, you may ignore those tweets at times. <clears throat> um, you may, you know, it may just be too much stuff going by. I guess uh, my question is, you, if you, you're following 5,000 people, don't you just feel like you're, it's just a flash? Well, that's why I use so many different search streams because, you know, there's very specific things I want to look for. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to have it all get streamed by and I'm going to, you know, check it carefully. Now, I also archive a lot of tweets. So if I get it, if you have that, you know, those three people who are just, you have to see everything they say, I just have Hootsuite save all that, archive it, and you have to pay them for that service. But then at the end of any, you know, week, month, year, it doesn't matter, I can go back and look. Um, someone, I think it was Todd was talking about using it as a reading list, using Twitter as a reading list. Um, that's a really good way to do that be able to go back and work with it. Twitter doesn't archive automatically, so a lot of the stuff just goes away. Um, there are a number of ways to save the tweets. You can archive them using Hootsuite. You can use Google Reader and subscribe to the tweet stream, and then that'll save it all unless Google decides to stop doing that. Um, and then there's more advanced, you know, there, there's tools built just to do this as well. Um, and Twitter actually has a programming API, you know, if, if you want to write a little script. No? Okay. Just checking. Bruce is kind of scratching up. The big obstacle I seem to face in all of this is that I'm just not a consumer of this stuff. Uh, I don't have the time. Like, the time for me is so challenging. And I get so overwhelmed by how much is coming at me that I, I sort of don't know where to start. So, what, uh, can I ask what your industry? Yeah, I'm a cons uh, consultant. Um, so I to professional services to small, medium-sized companies. Okay. Um, so, I mean, if you're if you're doing a lot of well, first of all, I think you're probably going to want to become a consumer of it. Um, and the real question is how you do that. Uh, and what I would suggest is instead of trying to consume an entire huge, humongous tweet stream, um, start with maybe two blogs that just seem really fantastic. Uh, you know, if you're if you're a productivity consultant, take a look at you know, Merlin Mann's blog. Um, you know, if you're a, a management consultant, you know you can look at you know outliers like Thirty Seven Signals or whatever. Um, just read their stuff. Start small. Take a look at it. If that's all you can, if that's it, that's fine. Then just start with that and start pushing out interesting stuff from that. What I usually find though is at some point you, those those blogs will start to repeat a little bit. Um, in which case, you know, stay subscribed because occasionally new stuff comes up, but you're going to want to move on to something else. And you do that, and you just keep doing that, and you start expanding and growing. And anytime I take one of those blogs and I start following the blog, I'll usually add the authors to Twitter just to have it there so I can go check if I have time. All this is predicated on whether I have time. Like this week, while I was prepping for this, I haven't been on Twitter, you know, half as much as I usually am. Um, you know, next week, I'll probably be on there a lot more. And I don't let it, you know, I don't want, I don't let that stop me. I don't want to just say, oh, well, I can't do it consistently, so I give up. Um, but on the other hand, I'm not going to, you know, make it kind of control my schedule. So you want to start by being a consumer, just a, just a really narrow slice. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you have a book you just read on the subject that you really like, you know, find that author, and follow him. I, I would add to that that going back to early on, you said, where are your customers? That's why mm -hmm. I think it's important. Whether you do it or not, it doesn't matter. Does your consumer do it? Is that valuable to them? Is there yeah. a way to matter? So. Uh, you know, at some point, you are going to need to find your way in there, because that is where a lot of your potential customers are. And if you have time for nothing else, for nothing else, go to Quora and start answering one question a day. Don't do anything else. If you're cutting this down to the bare minimum because of the business you're in, that's where you want to start. Because there are people you know, who are literally starting major startups um, who will want to see your answers or your questions. And what I find is then other people who are answering, if they're impressed, you know, they'll go and they'll look at what you're saying and it just kind of goes from there. Okay, so managing it all, which is what we were just talking about. Actually, I kind of did this whole thing now. Use lists a lot. You know, I talked briefly about how you can group people you're following on Twitter and Facebook and whatever into lists. Use them a lot. You know, I have lists of five people. I have lists of 500 people. 
Um, it just totally depends on what I need it for at that point. And I'm constantly adding and deleting them. Like, I, I don't have many lists that I keep forever. Um, <clears throat> you know, right now, there's a lot of bike racing going on. So I have lists of people I'm following who are, you know, who are racers or mechanics or whatever who are involved in the different races. Um, you know, uh, NFL playoffs, you know, I'm going to be following different players or whatever. You know, it's just I'm going to turn that stuff on and off. Um, you know, for my own profession, uh, if there's a conference going on, I'm going to make a list of the people who are speaking at that conference and just follow them while they're at that conference. So lots of different things there. Be ruthless, okay? Removing people who are not, you know, removing people from your lists or, or, or you know, unfollowing people who just aren't helping you that much is not some kind of personal insult. <laughs> um, it's just practical, right? If you're at the big party and you've been talking to someone for two and a half hours and you just want to go talk to someone else, you just say, excuse me, I got to go mingle. Um, if I said that, they would faint because there's no way that I'm going to go mingle anywhere. Um, I'm going to cling to them like a, like a remora or something. Um, but I'm probably, you guys probably all think I'm completely pathological now. But, um, but be ruthless. Okay, just don't, you know, just remove stuff that is not helping you. Uh, having followers is important, but it's not the be all and end all. And yeah, one last time, it's just talking and you got to make sure that it matters. And when I think about lists as well, the, the it must matter thing is really useful. I do not put people on lists lightly. I am not going to create a list of people unless every single one of them is posting something incredibly important or useful to me at least half the time they post. There's no way I'm going to put it there. Unless maybe there's someone in there that I really want to get their attention. So I'm just following everything to see if there's an opportunity for me to help them out. You know, whatever. So I'm going to go through the hard lessons uh, and things that your mom didn't teach you. There's some kind of bad language in here, sorry, uh, but that's kind of how these hard lessons come about. Um, this is a really bad one. Um, so this is Chrysler talking, uh, and it's actually the agency that previously worked with Chrysler talking. Um, and here's what, here's what happened. They were using something like Hootsuite. And instead of posting on their personal account, they accidentally posted to the Chrysler Autos account. Oops. That cost them millions, literally millions. Plus, they probably can't go to Detroit anymore. Detroit is not a town where you want a lot of people angry at you. Um, baseball player, nice. Way to be really popular in San Antonio. He gets worse than that, too. I, I don't know who let him get on Twitter, but whoever his agent is, terrible. OK, this one is just evil. This goes beyond just kind of head shaking. Um, this is downright satanic. So this is Bing. Now, they're saying, remember I said line up an action with agreement with something that will help you socially? OK, if you're donating money to people who are victims of an earthquake, those rules don't apply anymore. All right, You don't go out and tell people, we're only going to donate a dollar if you retweet us. That's not OK. All right, That doesn't work. That's taking advantage of a disaster in an effort to try to pop, make yourself more popular. I mean, really, Bing is going to donate up to $100,000. Do you know that Bing spends more than that every half an hour just buying traffic to their own search engine because they can't get anyone to use it? See, and I'm not exaggerating. So I mean, that's ridiculous. That would be like me going out on the street and saying, I will donate $5 to the American Red Cross if 500 people go out and find me clients. You know, it just, it's just... There's no connection there. And yes, I am ranting. Um, <clears throat> Kenneth Cole, you've probably already heard of this one. Um, this was just terrible, terrible judgment uh, on the part of, and apparently it really was someone at Kenneth Cole. It was not their agency. Um, this one, by the way, was an agency. Yeah, it was actually the guy, Kenneth, yeah. Yeah, Kenneth Cole himself. Um, and I'm sure this is one of those ones <laughs> he wishes he could have had back, because um, <laughs> he's not stupid. Um, uh, you know, he, he probably just thought this was kind of funny at the time. I, yeah, we've all had those, all right? I, I do sympathize. This one, I don't sympathize so much. So this is the agency that works with the American Red Cross. Worked, past tense, with the American Red Cross. And they accidentally cross-posted that they found some beer. And they were having a good time getting drunk on the American Red Cross Twitter feed. You know, again, oops. Um, there's another one I couldn't find. But when Steve Jobs died, 
there was someone who posted something saying that um, this one org the organization that goes and pickets funerals of soldiers because we allow gays in the military, um, that they were going to go picket his funeral because of how evil he is. Um, that alone is just tasteless, but she posted it from her iPhone. And of course, on Twitter it says, posted from my iPhone. She got so much abuse, I'm sure she's never going to go on Twitter again. I mean, that was just, it was, it was kind of funny. Uh, this is another good one. So, and Nestle does this constantly. Nestle is, is like an entire training exercise for everybody and what not to do in social media. Um, so first, you know, Nestle has some really terrible, or supposedly, I'm a big Kit Kat eater, so I can only say so much about Nestle. But they apparently have some really bad things that they do abroad. Um, they put up a page, and people immediately took it over, saying, talking about how evil they were. And Nestle didn't know quite how to respond, so this went on for quite a while. Um, they did eventually get it under control, but you, know, you have to kind of think about this. A lot of companies just stay out of social media because they're afraid of this happening. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute, too. And then this one is my favorite. Okay, this one, I, I don't, this one is mind-boggling to me, and I'm sure there are 15 people in the interactive marketing division at Nestle who just wanted to quit that day because of this. But they basically said, don't use our logo as your profile picture. We'll delete your tweets, your posts that talk about us. We're, so let me get this straight. We're willing to pass your logo all over Facebook and plaster it all over Facebook while we talk about you in nice ways. These were people who were being nice. This was not the people who were saying how evil they were. This is people like me saying, I love Kit Kats. Um, and we want you to take it down. <laughs> That's what they did. Uh, and as you, it didn't go over so well. Um, and yeah, they just keep doing things like this. They'll stop eventually, probably, I don't know. Then you get the folks who say, you know what, we don't want to go on Facebook or Twitter. And this is a big thing. I work with a lot of law firms. And I get a lot of attorneys who say, you know, we don't want to let our staff on Twitter because, or Facebook because you know, we're afraid people will respond and say bad things to us, and then that'll put us in a difficult position. They're saying bad things about you anyway. They're talking about you anyway. The way I look at it is, if I have a page, at least they're all talking about me there. <laughs> and I can keep track of it, and I can respond to it. And I can respond to it in a good way, too. You don't have to respond um, to someone who's ranting at you by ranting back. right? You could just say, I'm really sorry you had a bad experience with us. Um, I would really like a chance to make it up to you, or I'd really like a chance to explain. Please contact me. And then if they keep on ranting, fine. But remember, it's persistent, right? So people are going to see that forever. They're going to see this one person going berserk, and then you responding nicely, and then that person just keeps frothing at the mouth. Well, who's going to, look, who's going to be discredited there, you or them? That's how you deal with social media. That's how you handle it. Staying away from it is not going to help you, unless you're Nestle, in which case maybe you never should have gotten into social media at all. Um, ignore trolls. Does anybody, everybody know what I mean when I say troll? It's not the big creepy looking guys that hide under bridges. Um, trolls are people who go trolling for responses. So they will go on Facebook, or they will go on your blog, or they will go some, on Twitter, and they will just post something completely outrageous. Um, and they will do it just because they would like to see a huge online fire spring up. That's the only reason they're doing it. Um, like I did a post once. The first post I ever had that really kind of hit it big, this one guy came in and said, you're clueless about marketing. You don't know anything. You're nothing but a, market cre a marketing cretin and an idiot. And by the way, he misspelled like five words in it. <clears throat> so, and, and this is my first, I wrote the first response, which was really nasty, and then deleted it, and then just wrote one saying, thanks for your opinion, and by the way, you might want to use a dictionary the next time you try to call someone a cretin. Um, and I just stopped there. Okay, That's the most you should feed a troll, nothing else. Because you're not going to help. You're not going to make it better. They're not there to have a concern addressed. They're there to throw a match on a bunch of dry wood. Don't be afraid to ask. Okay, so I talked about this before. Just don't be afraid to go to someone and just say, you know, via Twitter, via Facebook, hey, can you help me out with X or Y? Worst that's gonna happen is they're gonna ignore you. Now don't do it all the time. You know, don't become someone who just follows everybody around asking for things, but um, there's no harm in doing that. I do it all the time. I answer questions from people who do it all the time. If you feel like you're asking too much, just go answer more questions. You kind of balance out your karmic your online karma there. No drama. Um, 
if you are having personal drama, and I, have, I violated this rule once, about four or five years ago, and I have regretted it ever since. Um, in case you couldn't guess, I'm Jewish. Uh, so 3,500 years of genetic conditioning for guilt, right? That's what I have. So when I screw something up like this, I don't have to do it too many times. It just sticks forever. Um, <clears throat> if you're having a disagreement with someone, do not start tweeting about it. No matter how innocuous you think the tweet is. Everybody always thinks you're talking about them anyway. I mean, I'll tweet something and someone will say, is that about me? And I'll say, no, oh God, no, 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 of course not. You know, just keep the drama out of social. All right, you don't need to put it there. Um, that's what telephones are for <laughs> and what in-person, you know, what coffee shops are for. Um, don't put it all on Twitter. Um, and then the last thing I would say before I get to Q&A and dealing with some other, you know, going over other stuff if we want to is just, you know, we all hit a point where we kind of look at it and we're just like, why are we doing this? This is a complete waste of time. And, and I get there at least once a week. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, at that point, the things I do, well, generally, I walk away from it. You know, walk away from social media for a day or two or a week or whatever. The worst that happens is you lose followers and you start over again. Um, if you have 50,000 followers, it's not going to happen anyway. And if you have 50, so you have to acquire 50 followers again. So, you know, if you totally are giving up on it, walk away from it from a bit for a bit, get some help, or try a completely different topic. And this is something I'll do too. I, for, I'm lucky because a lot of the people I work with and that I, I, I hire and that I teach, they're all nerds just like me. So I can just switch from talking about marketing to talking about Doctor Who or talking about a video game or talking about whatever. Or I can completely switch gears, right? You know, I'll talk about my favorite football team or cycling. There's nothing wrong with doing that occasionally. And you might be amazed, actually, at how many people you connect with who you didn't expect had those, those common interests, and they do. Sort of like talking at a party where you suddenly find out someone has the same interest as you. Um, and you can make extra connections that way. And it can be a lot of fun because you're changing topics for a little bit. Does the th family Thanksgiving rule apply, though, as far as religion and politics? I, I don't know what your, my family Thanksgiving rule is, well, I can't, I'm not going to say it where it's being recorded on video, so. Uh, stay away from the subjects of religion and um, politics on your, on your posts. I have a funny story about that. Uh, I, I had 11,000 Twitter followers about two years ago, and then I made a post making fun of the Tea Party, uh, and I went from 11,000 to 8,000 in about, Two hours. I'm not saying I miss those people, okay? I'm not saying, you know, but it can cost you big. Um, so you be very careful about politics. Um, you know, with, with President Obama's announcement about gay marriage a couple of days ago, I was posting about that on my personal Facebook page. Um, I think I posted one thing on Twitter that was pretty innocuous, but I try to be careful. Um, partly because I, I just don't... Some of it's the Thanksgiving rule, but some of it is just... There's just certain things that are going to offend people that you like and want to talk to, and I don't necessarily want to go there um, just for fun. <laughs> um, so you try to be careful about that. No, 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 no. Um, how has all of this uh, affected the importance of keyword research? Um, the question was, how has this impacted the importance of keyword research uh, and search engine optimization? Here's the thing, all right? The internet is still broken up into certain basic generators of business. Um, search is still 85% of that game. All right, social media is there, and it does stuff. But you remember at the very beginning, I made social media a little tiny bug on the screen. Um, if you look at social media as a revenue generator, it's very small. And search is very big. Um, so keyword research is still important. But social is increasingly supporting search and driving search results. That's what's important. So like the reason Google launched Google Plus wasn't, I don't think, because they want to be like Facebook, right? They don't care. They're, they're a search engine. Facebook's a social media site. But they want the data to support the way that they structure their results. It's much harder to spam social media and fake social media than it is to spam some of the other signals they use to create rankings. So like it used to be in the good old days, I could go out and buy 2,000 links and point them at someone's website and they would start ranking. Poof. Not that I ever did that, Google. I'm not saying that, but um, if you did, that's what happened. 
it was very easy to fake that. So a site that didn't deserve, that didn't really matter, could still get there. It's very hard to do that in social media because even if I go out and buy 2,000 followers, they're not going to respond to me. And we've done correlation studies that show that you know, Google looks, it, it looks like Google's looking at not just how many followers you have on Facebook, but how many comments per post you get. What percentage of your followers actually respond to you? And if you look at the top ranking sites sometimes, it'll make no sense until you look at that data. And all of a sudden, it totally makes sense why, that they, why they're ranking, because they have a higher engagement, a higher response rate than anyone else. So social media is starting to really drive a lot of search, but keywords are never going to go away, because people use them to find stuff. Um, so you're always going to need to know your customer's language. Uh, and that's where, where I'm at is I'm stuck <clears throat> in a highly competitive keyword space the two years or three years ago. Uh, and the follow-up question was there was just you know the budget's not infinite. How do you how do you compete in search then, um, in a in a very competitive keyword space? So understand first of all that there's two kinds of buying rankings, right? There's there's pay per click where you're just buying those paid ads down the side, and then there's paying someone to do search engine optimization to help you move up in the rankings, because <clears throat> you can't pay Google to move up in those that main column. There though, there's some basic signals. There's relevance, which is the words you use. And there's authority. And authority used to just be links, but now it's also social. So you can boost your authority. And the stuff you would do to get a better presence in social media, to gain more authority in social media, will also help you build links. So it will get more people linking to the things that you put on your site. So if you have a blog where you're writing content, um, this is a whole other seminar, but you're, where you're posting really useful, interesting content about what it is that you do, um, and you have you know, this really good engaged audience of a couple thousand people, and when you post, you tweet it out, those people are suddenly, they're going to respond, they're going to mobilize really effectively. And they're all going to retweet what you just said, and they're all going to talk about it. And that's going to get you a lot of links, which directly helps you in the rankings. Um, and it's going to get you, you know, more people following you on Google+, which is going to help you because your Google+, Plus result will get inserted. So there's definitely ways around that. Um, if I'm, getting, if I'm thinking about the right industry, you, know, you do have a lot of competition, but most of it is not very sophisticated. <clears throat> There's, most of them are not going to be using social media effectively yet. So that's a huge competitive advantage if you can get in there. A lot of the goals that you brought up, like answering questions and posting useful links, seem to revolve around becoming an expert. So the, the question there was, you know, is becoming an expert the only way to matter? No, I mean, becoming an expert's not the only way. Um, but I will say that everybody is an expert on something. There's something you're an expert on. There's something where you can offer value. It's an easy way to matter. Um, you, know, you can just be extremely funny, right? And that could be a good reason to, to write something. Or you could be the only person who can observe the movements of ships in and out of a particular port all the time. So you can tweet, oh yeah, hey, check it out. This one just, you, know, you can do your own shipping news on, on Twitter. Um, that's perfectly good if it's a unique source of, of knowledge and information. Um, but it, a lot of people tend to come, end up coming back to the expert thing. It just, it's just kind of easier. Think about it. In, just If a friend asks you for advice, you're not really an expert, but for those 10 seconds, you are kind of. So it's tough to distinguish, I guess is what I would say. I do have a question, actually. Okay. On Facebook, for those of us who are solo entrepreneurs and who are our business or the face of our business. Um, so the question there was if you're an individual consultant, you know, a sole proprietor, basically, and you, do you really need to have a Facebook business page? Can you just use your personal page? Um, I would say you could totally just use your personal page. Um, it, it's not, you know, the, the only, again, it's, it's about the ability to split the two. I think that matters more. Um, I can't think of any advertising or tools or anything on Facebook that are unique to pages. Do you have a limit of how many people friends? Oh, that's a really good point. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think yeah. 2,500, 5,000. So, if you did that, you can't do more. Yeah, so profiles. So, the answer there for folks who are listening to the stream um, profiles, personal profiles don't allow you to follow to friend as many people on Facebook. And also, um, you actually can't buy ads pointing at profiles. So you can only buy ads for professional pages. So it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, if you're 
a sole proprietorship and you don't need a huge audience and you work within a very specific area, or, you know, geographic area or something, you might be okay with a, pay, with a profile. Um, you may also eventually want to move it to a page. Not move it, but you know, set up a separate page. And you can always do that. So. Relating to Lenore's question, let's say you do have a personal profile page and a business page and you have a post that really uh, you want to apply to both. But now that shows up twice, I think, for viewers. What, well, what I'll usually do is I'll, I'll post it to the, the business page and then I'll share it as the person. So, like, I'll go on the Portent page and as Portent I'll post something. And then I'll share it as Ian Lurie to my wall. See what I'm saying? So it's, it's just me going and looking at a business page that happens to be mine and then resharing that content. This has to do with more, uh, I know that with etiquette, I think, um, and just what expectations there are. So the, the crux of the question there for folks who are online um, is just, you know, is it okay to post something and then not respond to other people's questions and stuff for quite a while? Is it okay to do that? Um, generally, yes. I, I don't generally find that people mind a lot. Um, Unless, you know, don't post something like, oh my God, and then go away for five hours. People don't like that. Um, it tends to bother them a little bit. But, yeah, um, but, you know, generally posting something and then not responding for a while is okay. You know, people get on planes, people are in meetings, whatever. Um, if someone did, you know, sound annoyed or something, just say, really sorry, I was in my car. So the immediacy of it isn't as necessary as this 90 minute Because it's also persistent, and because when you respond, it's gonna show up in their stream when you respond, not when you originally, so like on, if I was on Twitter, and I post something, and then someone posts a question, and then four hours later I answer, it's gonna show up in their tweet stream then. Um, so that's gonna work okay. And if, it, if it's an issue, if you're in a business, or if you're posting stuff that does need immediate response, that's where you need someone else helping you out. Um, even if you are always available, I would do that because you know, even every 90 minutes may not be enough in that situation. Um, you may really want people to respond immediately. Mm -hmm. um, we talked a little while ago about a duplication of content. And say you have a blog and you want to post that blog on Facebook and on LinkedIn and whatever. Do you have to change it before you post it or can you just post it? And then so the question there was, is it okay to duplicate your post, to, to post the same thing to LinkedIn and to Twitter and to every place else, and to your blog? Um, I never post the exact same words to my blog that I'm putting out in social media, because I'm never going to post a 140 character or, or, or a 300-character you know, thing to my blog. Um, so I would never do that. Across different social networks, yes, I would totally do that. Um, and I do it all the time. You know, I'll post the same thing to Twitter and LinkedIn and Google+, Plus, um, and then maybe something a little bit, well, actually Twitter and LinkedIn, and then maybe something longer to Google+, Plus and to Facebook. Um, and again, it's because even if the same people are on all those networks, they're not looking at all of them at the same time. I mean, unless they're all staring at Hootsuite, you know, all the time. Um, that would be unfortunate. But um, So, I, you know, I'm not really necessarily that worried about it. There are times when I'll reword things or I'll, I'll word things differently because the audiences are different. Like I'll definitely be more flamboyant on Twitter than on LinkedIn um, and more flamboyant on Facebook than on Twitter. Uh, so you know, sometimes I'll, if I'm pushing it too much, I'll reword it and you know, tone it down for other networks. But that's really the, the primary, uh, primary concern. But again, blogging is something else. I would never have something I write on like Google Plus duplicated on my blog. That would definitely be a problem. How important is it to have like, a consistent personality that you're using on your social media that's engaging so people know how to respond to you and coming to you? So the question there was, you know, how much really just basically how much personality should you how much of your personality should come through in social media um, and how does that affect virality? Um, people don't want to read computers. Uh, you, you want your personality to be out there. Again, it's talking, so you, you, you want your personality to be inherent in what you say. Um, if nothing else, it's way too hard to intentionally tone it down 100% of the time, which means that at some point, you're really going to throw people. Because at some point, you know, something is going to, you're going to say something, and it's going to be, you're going to say it quite naturally, and 
that's going to throw people for a loop. And it might not be that big of a deal. It might be totally incongruous, uh, t not incongruous, totally uh, harmless, but it may still throw them because suddenly the tone changes and they think, wait, has it been a bot tweeting to me all this time? And now I just heard the person, and then I'm going to hear a bot again? Um, so I, you know, I'm all for more personality. Uh, if you read the social media policies of some really big companies, they're not. Um, but I just don't see how you do this without it. And, and the whole point of social media is finding the people who can directly connect with your, the way you approach things. It's very hard to market yourself. In general, marketing is about differentiation. Social media is the ultimate place where you're going to be trying to differentiate yourself. So you, know, you really want to make sure that you stand out. If, if, if everybody's out there talking the same way, then you know, certainly social media is not going to help you sell. It's not going to help you build an audience because you're the same as everybody else. Um, and I hear this a lot. I hear the concern, you know, I'm going to drive people away. Well, you know, maybe you should because um, you're also going to really attract some people. And I'm not saying be obnoxious, but you understand what I'm saying. You, know, you can't be everything to everyone anyway. And if you try to make yourself so vanilla that everybody is OK with it, then everyone's OK with it and no one's interested. You don't matter to anyone. Any other questions? We've got about three minutes left. We can do with this. What'd you say? The heads are starting to explode. Yeah, OK, head explodes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. OK, well, thank you all very much. I hope this is helpful.